بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أعزائي طلبة المرحلة الثالثة السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته في هذه المحاضرة سنقدم قراءة وتحليل لقصيدة تيثونس للشاعر الفكتوري ألفريد لورد تنسن Welcome dear students In this lecture we are going to give a critical analysis of Alfred Lord Tennyson's poem entitled Tithonus. Tithonus was written in 1833. It is a dramatic monologue on a classical subject. It is based in the classical Greek myth of the love of goddess Aurora or Eos for a human who is Tithonus. The theme of Tithonus is the contrast between youth and age and love and death. The poem teaches us the truth that man should not desire to vary from the kindly race of man, nor seek to pass beyond the goal of ordinance. Pythonus is a highly wrought piece of art. A critic named J. B. Hearn says about the poem, the poem is one of the most beautiful poems Tennyson wrote. What does seem significant and characteristic is that the best poetry should again be drawn from him by just such a subject. Now let us summarize the poem before we start reading and appreciating its stanzas one by one. The poem opens with the speaker who is Tithonus. Unlike all other elements of the world, he is unable to die. The woods are decaying, men work the land and die, the swan dies later. Tithonus becomes immortal but very aged, withering in the arms of his beloved, on the, east, on the eastern edge of the world, feeling like a wandering shadow. Tithonus, the speaker, describes himself as not being a man. Then he states how he came to be this way. He describes asking Eos for immortality and her giving it to him without eternal youth, so he will not die as other people or humans do. Every morning in the poem he sees the sunrise and look at Eos' chariot take her into the sky. He frequently asks her to partake the immortality she gave it to him without receiving any response from her. Tithonus experienced the coldness of her rosy shadows in the morning, while the men below are still warmed by the day. These men are happy and have the power to die, and even get happier in death, because they are humans. This is a brief you see, summary of the poem, uh, which will help us to understand the details of each stanza. Now, before we start dealing with the text, you have to know two facts. The first one is the poem mainly based on a classical mythology, that is the true story of Tithonus. We need to have the original story of this myth just to find what is coincident between the original story of Tithonus and the Victorian man. In other words, why does the poet use this myth but not any other one? What does he want to say about the Victorian people by using Tithonus or referring to the story of Tithonus? The other point here is to uh, know the definition of a dramatic monologue because the poem is built on that technique. The poem is considered as a dramatic monologue because we have only one speaker, only one voice in the poem who is Tithonus. First of all, Tithonus is defined in facts on file encyclopedia of world mythology and legend. In Greek mythology, a handsome young man, son of Laomedon, king of Troy, Aurora, the dawn, fell in love with him and granted him immortality at his request. Tithonus forgot to ask for perpetual youth. As he grew older and older, he begged the goddess to kill him. Aurora eventually changed him into a grasshopper. You know, Tennyson's Tithonus, a dramatic monologue that deals with this, you see, tragic fate. <clears throat> 
Dramatic monologue, once more, can be defined as a poem which reveals a soul in action through the conversation of one character in a dramatic situation. The, char the character is speaking to identifiable but silent listener in a dramatic moment in the speaker's life. The circumstances surrounding the conversation, one side of which we hear as the dramatic monologue, are made clear by implication in the poem and a deep insight into the character of the speaker is always given. The poem describes the plight of Tithonus, who is cursed to an immortal life in which he continues to age. Now we move to the analysis of the poem. First of all, I shall give a condensed unified analysis of the whole poem. Uh, I mean an intensive one. And then I shall give you analysis uh, to stanza by stanza, you see. In this poem, Pythonus requested immortality at the, end, at the beginning, but he forgot to ask eternal youth. He began the unintended consequences of missing the, his essence. He is very wretched that he cannot partake in the, in, in the earth that is the duty of every mortal. It means he cannot die up to his world, you see, because he uh, looked for uh, immortality. Tithonus reflects the thought of the Victorian man who is longing for the far-fetched immortality since he suffers from all the drastic changes that the Victorian society witnessed. More particularly, the conflict between science and religion from which his loss of faith and longing for survival and immortality is resulted. This is a crisis poem, though there is, you see, a slight difference between the actual meaning of a crisis and the current situation of Tithonus. The poet wants to say that the Victorian man should know the fact that death is something to be desired, not feared or avoided since it is a part of the natural cycle of all mortal species. Now let us read the first stanza. The woods decay, the woods decay and fall. The vapors weep their bath into the ground. Man comes and tills the field and lies beneath and after many a summer dies the swan, me only cruel immortality consumes, I wither slowly in thine arms, here are the quiet limits of the world, a white-haired shadow roaming like a dream, the ever silent spaces of the east, far folded mist and the gleaming holes of morn. Here is the first stanza of the poem. Dear students, I would like you to check the meaning of each word before you start listening to the analysis. And then also you take notes along our you see, reading and appreciating of the, all, of the whole stanzas and also check the meanings that are new to you or those you are unfamiliar with. In this stanza, the poem opens with Tithonus, son of Laomedon, a king of Troy lamenting his immortality as he is looking at the withering woods. He repeats the phrase woody decay, woods decay twice for emphasis as a simple act of life moving on to death is out of his realization. After decaying the woods, fall and vapor covers the ground. This vapor is part of the process of reincarnation through which every living thing participates. So the earth is reused and renewed when the vapors weep their burden and to the ground and man comes along and till the field and all that lies within it. So here is a natural cycle of that life. Tithonus is alone in the world. He is isolated by the cursed immortality which has been granted up to his request by Aurora or Eos. He is being consumed and is withering without being dead.
second stanza alas for this gray shadow once a man so glorious in his beauty and thy choice who madest him thy chosen that he seemed to his great heart none other than a god i ask thee give me immortality then didst thou grant mine asking with a smile like wealthy men who care not how they give but thy strong hours indignant work their wills and beat me down and marred and wasted me and though they could not end me left me mind to dwell in prisons of immortal youth immortal age beside immortal youth immortal age beside immortal youth and all i was in ashes can thy love thy beauty make amends though even now close over us the silver star thy guide shines in those tremulous eyes that fill with tears you see in this stanza the speaker explains his current miserable state you know it is realized from the original myth of Tithonus as I have just defined that thy the pronoun thy refers to Aurora or Eos is a personification of dawn after she fell in love with Tithonus he besought her to saying give me immortality he is addressing Aurora Aurora granted him eternal life but not eternal youth so like any thoughtless mortal he forgot to ask about or grant for eternal youth just to stay young instead of being more and more aged after she fell in love with Tithonus he besought her by saying give me immortality Aurora granted him immortality but not the eternal youth in another line of this stanza Tithonus is pleading with Aurora take back take back thy gift take back thy gift he desires to convince her that he is better to be dead he also tells her that no man would desire to diverge from the given normal mankind and avoid death now he realized the importance of the of the cycle of life naturally as Tennyson wants to say all the Victorian people he wants them to realize that no man is supposed to be immortalized and death is inescapable this is the norm of life and man is no exception like all other living creatures in this life now we move to the next stanza a soft air fans the cloud apart there comes a glimpse of that dark world where I was born once more the old mysterious glimmer steals from thy pure brows and from thy shoulders pure and the bosom beating with the heart renewed thy cheek begins to redden through the gloom thy sweet eyes brighten slowly close to mine ere yet they blind the stars and the wild team which love thee yearning for thy yoke arise and shake the darkness from their loosened manes and be the twilight into the flakes of fire lo ever thou ever thus thou growest beautiful in silence then before thine answer given departest and thy tears are on my cheek you see in this stanza the speaker looks at the sky before the sunrise and you see the coming of aurora the sky is like the dark world that all mankind come from before they were born according to Tithonus for him it is a kind of mystery that he will not find any answer to it is something mysterious for him in the same stanza moreover he describes what aurora looks like as she is you see cresting the horizon in, the, in, in every morning now we move to the next stanza why will thou ever scare me with thy tears 
and make me tremble lest a saying land. In days far off on that dark earth, be true. Amy, Amy, with what another heart, in days far off and with what other eyes I used to watch. If I be the worst, the lucid outline forming round thee so, the dim cults kindle into the sunny rings, change with thy mystic change and fill my blood, glow with the glow that slowly crimsoned all. Thy presence and thy, spo and thy portals while I lay, mouth, forehead, eyelid growing dewy warm, whispering I knew, not what of wild and the sweet. Like that's the train song I hear the polo sing, while alien like a mist throws into towers. In this stanza, Tithonus never receives any response from Aurora. He is afraid that there is a little choice for Aurora to take back what she granted to him. Then he recalls the loveliest time of his life with another heart. He laid down beside another lover. He recalls his, you see, nice times before he kept in touch with Aurora. He is dreaming of the better time while city of Troy was built. Yet hold me not forever in thine east. How can my nature long mix with thine? Call thee thy rosy shadows, bathe me. Bathe me cold are all thy lights, and cold my wrinkled feet. Upon thy glimmering th thresholds, when the steam floats up from those dim fields about the bombs of happy men that have the power to die, and the grassy burrows of the happier dead, release me and restore me to the ground. Thou seest all things, thou wilt see my grave. Thou wilt renew thy beauty morn by morn. I earth in earth forget these empty cards, and thee returning on thy silver wheels. Here is the last stanza, which is the fifth. In this stanza, you know, Tithonus begged Aurora not to, you see, hold him in the east where the sun rises. His nature, as a man, is unable to mix with her arm. Her light feels to him like a cold bath and wrinkles his feet. He pleads to her to release him to get back to the ground. If she does so, she will see his grave every morning within the earth. So the major theme of the poem is, is, is immortality, which is far-fetched as you see Tennyson tackles it to send a message or to deliver a major theme to the Victorian people that death is something inescapable and immortality is out of man's will. Thank you dear students.